picked a subject tonight for how do you get a septic and what is a septic. Hopefully I can do a little bit better than I did last time. Six minutes was my window the last time. I'm going to see if I can do a little bit better this time. <laughs> they always say five minutes is about what you can get someone's attention for. So let's see if I can do a little better this time. We go through life just learning what is acceptable and how do you get accepted. We have dreams if we will ever get accepted to anything that we want to do in life. But Jesus accepts us just how we are. Mm. In Isaiah 49, 8, Thus saith the Lord, In acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the justly heritage. We need to get we need to get on fire for Jesus. Right. Don't let the fire of our don't let the fire go out and nobody will see our fire that burns for Jesus. Right. There's people in the world that needs to see the fire that we have for right. God. That's right. When we was kids, we would love to run, we love to play ball. We run the bases when we play softball or kickball. We run the bases when we play. We run up and down the court when we play basketball. When your favorite team was scored the last basket of the game and won, and we would be so happy that we we may have jumped and and chased, you know. Uh, we would jump for, jump for them every time they won, or what be, we'd be so happy. Right. <coughs> well, when the, the touchdown in the football game that would, would have scored the goal yep. for the team that was that we was rooting for, why can't we do that in church today? Mm -hmm. Why do we hold back of what is God doing for each one of, you, one of us? Right. Because it doesn't matter if we win or lose because we are on the winning team. Mm. In Romans 14, 18, For he that in these things served Christ as acceptable to God and approved of men. I just jotted down, do things unto God that is acceptable. Um, in the Message Bible, in Romans 1418 says God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put your stomach for goodness sake it's, the, it's what God does all with your life as he sets it right puts it together and completes it with joy your task is to single modify serve Christ do that and you will kill two birds with one stone pleasing the God above you and proving your worth to the people around you say that we're on fire for God, but are we really? Here is another question. We, we give everything to God, but do we really do it? I wrote those two questions down, but I'm not just really speaking to you for these questions. Just, I'm speaking to me as also. In Hebrews 12, 28, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. With this verse, if we can take a moment to let it sink in for a few minutes and just think about what we're going to have, a kingdom that cannot be moved when we serve God. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but bring with worship deeply reverence before God. But God is not in, 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 indifferent by its standard. He's actively cleaning house, touching all that needs to burn, and he won't quit until it is all clean. God himself is on fire. When you look into this great book, the Bible, 
who would know what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. We know what is acceptable and what, what not is acceptable, but when we accept things that maybe we shouldn't, but then we may say, well, this isn't that bad, or this one is okay, yeah. if it doesn't line up to the good book then we, that we live by and go by, then we shouldn't accept these things at all. Second right. Corinthians 6, 2, for he saith, I have learned for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Salvation is accepted today. There's a time that we need to look inside of ourselves sometimes, if not all the time. There's time that we need to dig so deep into his word right. to find what is accepted for us in our lives. In Job 13, 8, will he accept his person? Will he contain for God? There might be a time that we may need to ask God to show us where we need to be and to show us if there is anything that we may be holding back or any sin that we may have. It doesn't matter how, how big or how small it is. I believe that we need to get back to the basic of life. I'm not sure if Jeremy or Jonathan had sung that song or not, but we need to get back to the basics. It's true that we need to get back to the basic of this wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ that would be acceptable to every one of us. Last week when the pastor was talking in the book of Acts and talking to us about a pattern for his church, when I was getting the subject where the pastor was hitting on things that has been on my mind and on my heart of what he was saying to, the, to us. This is acceptable of his people. We can take everything that this world can get, offer us or accept what they are giving us, but if it doesn't line up to God's standards, then I don't want what they're giving. That's right. I want things that God wants to give me. I need to just to get back to the basics and look into our hearts and see what is acceptable and what, is, what isn't acceptable. But God wants us to accept it. The church will accept whoever will. Isn't that amazing? But not just the church, but Jesus as well. That should be the only reason right there. I guess what I'm trying to say is when we need to be careful what, is accept, what, what to accept and what not to accept. We need to, to get back when we first was when we first was Christians and what we should stand on. Take his word and hide it into our hearts because there's a big world out there that doesn't even know this wonderful name of Jesus. Let's be like John the Baptist that he didn't care if he would be arrested or anything because he, he wasn't ashamed for proclaiming the name of Jesus. It's time to heed the word of God and, and stop and listen to what God may be talking to us. If you want God to talk to you and hear your cry or answer your prayers, then we need to find yourself in his word because that's where he is going to talk, talk to you and you will find your answer as well. In Psalms 28, 1, 1 and 2, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like <coughs> sin that go down into the pit. In verse 2, hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy And the same thing in the Message Bible that I picked for 28, 1 and 2 stands out a little bit more. It says, don't turn a deaf ear when I call you. God, if all I can get from you is deafening sound, I'd be better off in the, in the back hole, in the black hole. I'm letting you know what I need, calling out for your help, and lifting my arms toward your inner sanctum. In Psalms 61, 1 and 2, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer, 
And verse 2, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God will hear our cry. In Psalm 64, 1 and 2, God will hear, you know, in Psalm 64, 1 and 2, God will hear our voice. If we just, you know, it doesn't matter what, when we talk, and when we talk to God, He will hear our voice and hear our cry at every time. I have asked God to restore my soul, and I want to do the work for Him and to use me in whatever He wants to use me for. That's, you know, that's the bottom line is, is um, God will use us if we just Amen. give it everything, everything to Him. Then, if we do all that, then it be so much better. Listen to what he has to say.